Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, the Insane Productivity with Mortgage Coach Mastermind Call. Uh, I'm Dave Savage, and on this call, you have myself, you have Todd Bookspan as a co-leader and panelist on the call, and then I, I know we also have Michelle Town that we're going to bring in as a as a leader. Uh, Todd, welcome to the call, brother. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Glad to be back after uh, missing the last week. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, can't wait to hear what went on last week, and thanks for being here. Michelle Town, we're going to bring you over into the panelist area in just a minute. How are you doing today, Michelle? Oh, a little tired from a red eye back from Hawaii, but do uh, Michelle, you got cut out there at the end. I'm not sure what happened. Are you still there? I am. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. There you go. Okay, great. Yes, uh, uh, from a, a little tired from a red eye back from Hawaii, but happy to be here as well. Good. Well, I'll be calling on you, you know, I don't know, probably in about 15, 20 minutes if you can be ready to, you know, focus on a topic that you think would be useful for everyone. So one thing I want to do to start things off is last week I, I asked everybody what module you're on. I'd like to keep asking that, just make that a rhythm. And so I, at the very top of the thread in our Facebook page, let us know what topic you're on. I also just wanted to go through some of the, the links that we shared in the Facebook group, remind people that Danny last week talked about his counteroffer analysis, and we posted that. So if you are looking to use Mortgage Coach to get more business from realtors, you know, we assigned some homework assignments, uh, his five realtor strategies. Again, those are just for all of you. I, it's all of you, if not most of you are using Mortgage Coach. want to remind you to check that out. We also asked the question last week, what are your three big goals? Uh, again, that's a whole module in Darren's um, session. It might be ahead for some of you. But I do recommend everybody just get super clear on what are your three goals. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a chat going on about that. Anybody that wants to add some comments or might have some questions around that, let us know. Michelle Town had a couple great scripts, so Michelle, thanks on that, and when we bring you into the call, if you have any updates on your realtor scripts, we'd love to hear it, and if anybody used Michelle's script from last, last week and you want to share how it worked or didn't work, uh, feel free to make that a topic. Also, I, I did a, a shout out for this one, uh, Robert Stover's call from a few weeks ago, it was just a uh, had some really valuable strategies that are very relevant to mortgage coach leaders in today's market. We also talked about annual review last week. Todd, you weren't here, but uh, you were talked about, and in that context of that conversation, I posted the interview on annual reviews. Uh, Bobby, hopefully your question was answered on how to do voiceovers. Uh, want to remind everybody, we post the recording, so if you do want to go back and listen to the recording, Every week it's posted, so last week was week 20. Today will be week 21 of the Mastermind program. Uh, Michelle Town, great job at being an active leader and sharing a script that was valuable to everyone. Thank you for that. Uh, by the way, Michelle Town, what was kind of the backstory to sharing this script? Was it you heard it and you just put it to action? You know, anything you want to add to that? Um, for <laughs> so sorry for my scripts. Um, it's just something that. I need it. I don't. I don't really follow a script. But I kind of go how I want to do it. How what what feels comfortable for me. But I found that if I wrote it down first, so I can get my ideas out, it became more and more comfortable as I started saying it. So this was just a script that I used to kind of pinpoint what did I want to say to my client, what did I want to say to the realtors, and and what worked. And I would I, I revise it all the time. I'll add notes into it and then revise my script depending on who I'm talking to. You have to be adaptable. But um, that's why I did it. it. It helped me out tremendously. And it helped me walk through fear because I, I had something to say. Love it. And by the way, guys, this is just a three-minute quick hit video. I did post uh, a 25-minute interview. I mean, I think Tim Brahim's perfect loan process in this interview is definitely in our all-time greatest hits and, you know, something I think every top producer should look at, listen to, and it will fine-tune what you do. But I uh, wanted to remind you of that. Also, I, I posted, um, you know, I was thinking about some of the tools and technology I've used that make me insanely productive, and, you know, two of them came to mind. You know, one of them was this 
you know, in the insane inbox. This is something I've subscribed to for, I mean, it's been over five years. Uh, I think Bill Hart uses this. Uh, one of the all-time best investments I ever made saves me just, you know, hours every week. Uh, so check that out if you want to improve how you process email. Uh, I also wanted to shine a light on uh, Bill Hart's Three Pillars of Purchase Business. It's something I shared. Thought it was very valuable. Todd, I know in prep today you had some color around this and some thoughts. Anything you want to add within the context of this this post? Well, I think the three pillars will be a great a great future topic, and um, you know my my goal I think would be to to uh, nudge Coach Bill to to come back into our community here and present it, and and if he's not uh, available then I'll get his permission and I'll, I'll run one through it in the next call or two but I think there's definitely a great um, a great opportunity in there but I think once we kind of finish your intro um, I will share from the event last week that I was at with with Bill I'm um, just kind of a little bit in mindset and what I saw in there with with a room full of leaders right on so so by the way guys I'm, I've got about another minute or two in opening comments you know we first and foremost we want to make sure that any questions that you have on this call come first. So if you have a question, either raise your hand or post that question in the question section of go to um, webinar. So we will take a pause in just a minute or two, field any questions from the group, or if someone wants to raise their hand and share an insane productivity success story, that will come next and then Coach Todd will have some thoughts to share and, and then we'll have Michelle come in. But again, if anybody on this call has a question or comment, uh, be prepared, and then remember, by halfway through the call, whether you've raised your hand or asked a question or not, be prepared to be called on. Uh, I'm almost done going through some of the post in Insane Productivity, but I, I don't know. I mean, first of all, this this book that this came out of, uh, Tools for Titans by Tim Ferriss, is absolutely one of my all-time favorite books now. just came out a few weeks ago. I bought a case, and I'm, it's kind of my giveaway book. But I love this passage that Bill Hart shined a light on. You know, busy equals out of control. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. I'll let Todd, if you want to talk about this at some point, we can talk about it. But again, great post, great passage out of Tools for Titans, another great book for people that want to be insanely productive. I did post another uh, insane productivity tool that I use, and I again, I've used this for over five years. Uh, rescue time, it basically tracks everything that happens on my desktop and puts it into buckets. You know, I'm able to put things in like, this is highly productive, this is a waste of time. You know, so Facebook does not qualify as being my high productive time. When I'm in my CRM, that's high productive. When I'm doing something in Keynote, I'm creating. It puts it in my creativity bucket. So, again, one of the most powerful technologies I've ever implemented, deployed. I wanted to put it out there for everyone. Uh, rescue time, check it out. Uh, and then here we are with the last thing for the day. Prepping for today's call, I, I got popped up in my Facebook scroll, uh, a call I did with Todd two years ago. So for everybody, anybody that wants to just go deeper on the advice of Coach Todd Bookspan, I thought, hey, two years ago, as of yesterday, we did a great call. So Todd, uh, thanks for all the leadership you've brought to Mortgage Coach for, for many, many years, brother. Hey, my pleasure. I, I hope it was a good call. I don't remember what I said, so I'll have to re-listen to it, or at least you guys all on the call will have to re-listen to it. Tell me if I was good back then. Yeah, right. Well, hey, I, I know I covered just now probably five hours of content. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm just shining a light on it in case anybody wants to jump in for a half an hour here, an hour there. With that said, we are going to look for some questions, and then I'm going to hand it off to Coach Todd. Nobody has raised their hand, so remember, if you have a success story, have a question, and you raise your hand, we will call on you, and let's see if anybody has asked a question. Uh, okay, so Katie Pastor said, hey, Dave, wanted to follow up on the modules you mentioned last week. Oh, can you please email them over to me? All right, Katie, we will get that over to you. And uh, I'll figure out why you're not getting emails from the Insane Productivity Program. You should be getting that from Darren. So, by the way, there may be something like a spam block because, you know, it's Darren's program, Insane Productivity, but we will troubleshoot that. And, Marcy, if you could also look into that and let's figure out offline why Katie is not getting access to the modules. Sound good? 
All right, Todd, you were up. What topics do you want to cover or anything you want to bring from your offsite last week? All right, so the first thing I'll do is let's encourage people to raise their hands. If you can, Dave, um, hit me as an organizer so I can see if, if anyone raises their hands as well. I don't have access to that for some reason. But um, I would encourage all of you who are new. I can't see who is or isn't on the call today. So um, I just know that this year we've had a, a bunch of new folks. And, and I know you're thinking, gosh, the last thing I want to do is actually talk to this group. But, uh, but I think you guys have value to add to this group if you are willing to raise your hand. I, I think that when I look back on you know, the past 20 calls, I think I've been on probably 15 or 16 of those calls, and I always think that the best calls are the ones where we hear from you all, and you're all giving us input onto the direction of the call. So um, with lack of input from you guys, then, yeah, that's, that makes it fun for us. We get to, to run in a direction. Hopefully that's great for all of you. And, um, and I will talk about, so you guys have heard me talk about it before. Um, you know, I coach with Building Champions, and I'm part of a group called the Master's Coach. And I had the the honor of being part of the group as a client of Building Champions for over eight years, and now I've been a coach in it for about a year. And it's, it's a lot of fun. There's 42 uh, members of the group, and uh, there's a couple of CEOs, national sales managers, regional managers, uh, branch managers, uh, producers. And so it's a great combination of people. In fact, a lot of them are friends of the mortgage coach communities, Andrew Paul, the Navy SEAL, uh, producing branch manager with Benchmark, Josh Metal, you know, killer team. Uh, you know, I think 600 plus loans last year, a member of this group. So it's a really good mind share. And we actually spent a day talking about mindset. And I thought that was probably a good thing just to uh, maybe kind of spark some of you to ask some questions or, or join the conversation. Uh, but one of my friends who runs a large branch in Texas said, um, you know what, for me, mindset is all about um, what I do in February. He said, if I actually have the right mindset in February and my loan officers have the right mindset in February and we do the right things for productive, you know, ding, 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 insane productivity, um, that will make our whole year. He said, if we drop the ball in February, the January's already gone, so if we drop the ball in February, um, we're going to actually lose in 2017 versus win. And so my question for all of you is, you know, how is your mindset? How are you guys, you know, what is it you're bringing each day? And this is where I think insane productivity really, really helps. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to get to the morning routine for those of you who aren't that far yet, right? How are you prepping in the morning to show up at, at the office, right? What is your mindset that you're bringing in? Because ultimately, first off, you always have to do, you know, the, the checkup from the neck up, right? How's your own mind doing? But then you have to really think through, how is everyone else in your world doing, right? How is your team doing? What is their mindset? How is, how are your partners doing, right? What is, what is their mindset, right? Are your realtors like feeling great or are they feeling low? And then really look at it from the mindset of your clients. Do your clients feel like you know the world is good in their world, or are they also are they also struggling? And think about how you're prepped for your day, um, how you being productive, you blocking out the things. You know, I love the the tools that Dave is showing here, and I'd love to hear if anyone else is using some great tools like like that. But really, the mindset piece I think is is super critical. And, and ironically, um, you can hear Andrew Paul in Dave interviewed him. Um, a while back last year, and uh, you know he actually spoke about the, the mindset of a Navy SEAL. And you know what? I can't imagine. Um, you know, certainly if any of you are veterans and, and served, um, you know, thanks for that. But I can't imagine that mindset of having to be out in in the field. Um, and then you know, shifting gears and hearing him talk about now how he brings that mindset to the mortgage business was really cool. And it was just a great. It was kind of a great setup. And so. Um, I just think it goes right in line with what we're doing week in and week out here in insane productivity of, of kind of getting ourselves going. And so just kind of thought I would throw that out there, see if we can't stoke up some some conversation around that and, uh, you know, hopefully just get you guys thinking about the great tool that you've invested in and how it's got to be shifting your mindset. You guys are on this call, so I think I'm probably preaching to the choir, but um, I think it's just such an opportunity to take your mindset, take what Darren is teaching us in this program. Um, and how we can, uh, you know, take this and run with it and, and hopefully infect the other people around us in a positive way. What do you think, Dave? I like it. I, well, I would love to hear, I guess, a little more on the mindset because I'm a big believer in starting things right, especially knowing that the spring home buying season is coming. And when you look at the amount of purchase business that happens over the course of a year, so much of it happens during spring home buying season. 
Uh, so this is a, just an essential month to prepare for every top producing mortgage professional. So would you mind just, one, expand on that a little bit, and two, what are some of the things that, uh, you know, I know Josh is doing some things. By the way, I'm going to be interviewing Josh next month, and the whole call is going to be around preparing for spring home buying season. You know, what is Josh Meadows doing to crush it? But if you wouldn't mind just expanding on that a little bit more, and then again, folks, remember, you can post questions in GoToMeeting, and uh, we'll bring those into the call, and you can raise hands, and we will give those the priority. But in the meantime, myself, Todd, and um, Michelle will be the leaders. And then, Michelle, we're going to bring you in in about another five, ten minutes, so be ready to share some thoughts with everybody. But Todd, would you mind expanding you know, on that? Yeah, let me expand. Let me just give a quick plug for your call with, with Josh that's coming up. If you want to talk about mindset and someone who's got it in, not only have his own mind be in the right place, but the, the members of his team be in the right place, I won't take any thunder from Josh, but let me just tell you where Josh is heading, right? Josh's uh, specialty is physician home loans, and he has a really short season where he will do, you know, some ridiculous percent, 50 percent or more of his business in just a couple of months. And so imagine if you're going, um, you know, you're a loan a team that does over 600 units a year, um, and you think you're going to do 1,000 units in 2017, but you actually expect to do uh, the majority of that in three months. So they're going from normal business now, trying to keep his team motivated, um, trying to find ways to keep their mindset focused the right way. Ironically, they're, he's having the operations folks race to see how fast they can close loans um, because they're prepping for a couple of months where he anticipates the purchase volume to be 150 to 250 units. Um, for a couple of months, um, which is insane, right? I mean, you want to talk about insane. And so, um, you know, so from the, the mindset perspective, I'm seeing it all over the place. You know, certainly just like all of you on the call, you guys are the best of the best. I think at Master's Coach, these people were or are the best of the best. And they had good mindsets. But I can tell you, I'm coaching clients all over the country. I'm coaching um, branch managers. I'm coaching um, big producers that run teams. And I'm also coaching some people who are, you know, less than two years in the business and and looking to grow, and, and I can tell you that mindset plays in week in and week out on those on those coaching calls because I've got some people who are in markets where there's not a lot of inventory, there's not a lot of refinance activity, and so they're having to make a conscious decision from their mindset to go after new realtors, to, then they're trying to have to spark those new realtors in those markets with limited inventory and how they can start thinking differently. Um, and of course, ironically, I always tell them you know, about the, um, the strategy that Danny shared um, two calls ago. Um, you know, on the move up strategy, and just what can you bring to your realtor to help shift their mindset into into how they can grow their business? And so, you know, those clients tend to be struggling with mindset, right? If you have, you know, really small inventory, I know a lot of you are probably in markets where the the inventory is a challenge. Um, you know, uh, my brother-in-law in Phoenix is trying to buy a house, and first day on the market yesterday, they put in an offer, and there were there was ten other offers on the on the house when he put the offer in at like five o'clock and they were expecting more. You know, that's an inventory challenge in a particular price range in, you know, in the Arizona market. And maybe some of you are facing that. And then on the flip side, I've got some clients who are expecting this year to be kind of quiet. Like they were they did fifty percent, forty percent refis last year and they were they were getting ready to hustle. So they had the mindset of hustling and all of a sudden their purchase business has exploded. And so their mindset is in two places. Their mindset is focused on the stress of it, holy smokes, I wasn't thinking this was going to be what I was going to be doing, and, and how to come out of that and, and focus on the other part, which is, holy smokes, this is amazing, I've got all this, you know, I've got all of this business. And so um, as you start looking at that, one of the things that was interesting, I mentioned the morning routine, you know, Darren talks about bookending your morning and your night, and um, Daniel Harkavy, the founder of Building Champions, said something that, you know, kind of clicked the light bulb off when he was speaking last week, and he said that the thing that, that he knows to be true is that your morning routine actually starts the night before. And I love that piece of the mindset because ultimately he just said how you end your day, how you, um, you know, end with your mindset, what, what are you doing um, to clear it, what are you doing with your spouse or significant other, you know, how was your night with your kids, and that is what's going to get you thinking the right way in the morning. And so it's just a whole new perspective from how to get up and get running. Um, and so I've taken the change. So going back to your question of kind of, you know, what I'm seeing and what I'm doing, um, I'm asking people just that simple question, you know, how are you? And, you know, it's kind of funny. People are sort of like, 
well, like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, this really, I mean, how, how are you feeling? How, how do you feel in today's market? You know, what do you feel is going on? And then, um, and then I'm taking that and, and talking into, okay, well, what, what are the strategies that, that they have available to them? Of course, I want to tell them all to jump on and think productivity because these are the strategies you need, right? What are you, what are you doing to block out the, the noise in your world? Um, my favorite quote of the week um, is um, that there's a return on investment for managing your time. Um, and, uh, and, and it was really told to me in the context of if you can get your, if you can get your day under control and be proactive, um, if you already know what your hourly rate is, well, if you can figure out how to do a couple less things by saying no during the day, which is what Darren's going to teach us, um, that your hourly rate goes up without having to do any more business because you've actually detracted, subtracted hours that you're working, and so therefore your hourly rate can increase. So um, that's a that's a quote I'm going to continue to to work on and, and watch. And um, I don't know, Dave, how are you? How's your mindset this year? Oh, my mindset is game on, never been more clear, uh, doing insane productivity. You know, the last quarter of last year was amazing for me. Gave me a lot of new um, tools, processes, uh, you know, helping lead this community right here, you know, keeps me fine-tuned so that I'm more productive than ever. So I'm, I'm pretty fired up, really clear on my big three. Um, I am really focused on key behaviors both for myself and for my team. You know, reminding my team on the key behaviors to drive our big three and, you know, measuring and monitoring and tracking all of those behaviors like never before. So I'm, 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 I'm loving life. So Michelle, we're gonna bring you in in just a minute or two. Uh, you know, one, I didn't get enough people tell me where you're at in the program, so I am going to push another poll question only through GoToWebinar because I really want to make sure Todd, myself, and Michelle are clear with where everybody's at. So if you wouldn't mind voting, I mean everybody. Uh, you, again, one of the the keys to being on a being part of a um, a mastermind is participation. So uh, would love to see more people raise their hands and either share or ask. And would love more people to be posting, but we got to have everybody um, answer this poll question. So only 40% of you have answered it so far. Please, everybody. Uh, hopefully, you're you're not multitasking too much. All you all you got to do here is click, click the button, and uh, there should be no reason. Still, we're like at 50% mark. So for the 50% of you that have voted, thank you. And for the now we're at 40% who have not voted. So. For the 40% who have not voted, come on, you know, click the button. You know, are you just getting started on one through three? Are you at five through eight in the home stretch of nine through 12? Or are you going through this program again? So 70% of you have scared. voted. scared. We got too many yeah, people right? scared today, Dave. Come on, let's get our mindset going. We can all answer the yeah. poll question. It's anonymous. Yeah, well, by the way, Todd, I think this is a heads up that I think there's some people that are just multitasking to a point that they're on to another call. Uh, so anyways, take away, you know, anybody who's multitasking to the point that you don't see the survey question, uh, get on it. Uh, so I'm going to share the results. By the way, Todd, there are the results. 50% uh, are just getting started, 11%, uh, 8 through 5, we've got 5 on the home stretch, and 37% are going through this program again. I think that's pretty awesome. So um, big hug to anybody that's gone through the program again. You are a badass, and uh, congratulations for everybody that's just getting started. And uh, for those of you that are in the middle or on the home stretch, let's let's keep it going. Uh, so, with that said, um, at least we know where everybody's at. Uh, Michelle Town, you know, is someone that's going through the program again. Uh, any leadership you want to bring to today's insane insane productivity program? Um, sure. Thank you, Dave, so much. Um, one of the things, I'm on module six and seven again right now. I just finished module six while I was in Hawaii and module seven. Um, those two are probably one of the key things to defining, um, for me it was defining who I was, my values, my beliefs. Um, you know, I looked at why was I dissatisfied last year? Was there something that dissatisfied me and, and how, did I, how did I break through that? What did I change this year so that I don't have that same dissatisfaction and 
90% of the time when my dissatisfaction comes in, it's because I've set, I, I have too much on my plate. I, I, all the time, I'm, I'm always failing because I've scheduled so much and I can't get to it all. And so I've learned the art of saying no politely and being okay with it this year. That has been huge for me. Um, it's still a, I'm still a work in progress when it comes to that because I, I love to help people, but I've got to learn, you know, what my value is, what my what's my hourly rate? I know what my hourly rate is, and I and my hourly rate does not serve best by, um, you know, answering questions that don't produce for my team and myself. Um, one of the things that I learned this week, which was you know, I was in Hawaii on our our um, president's club vacation, and the morning time was incredible for me because I got up in the morning and I got up at between 5 and 5.30 in Hawaii and, you know, sat and I actually had really good quality time with my team in the mornings because I wasn't expected to work, so I was able to talk to them, you know, plan the day with them and they did an incredible job and it just furthered my team trust, as I call it. We, I just trusted them in, immensely and they did such a great job and I think that was an, another big key role because last year it wasn't like this. So it's just big growth for me. Love it. Well, I, I pulled up a few slides while you were talking, you know, more <laughs> to just kind of remind people of some of the things in those modules. Also, I pulled up the, the 12 reminders document. You know, you talked about your morning, you know, in the bookends. You talked about being clear on what you need to do so that you can say no more often. Uh, you know, I, again, great job. Hey, I, I'm curious, you know, when you're going through modules, I, I think probably everybody has kind of a different process. I, I tend to, you know, listen to it, have the slides up. I tend to not use the workbook as much, although sometimes I, you know, I, I do. I would just be curious that when you're going through the program, what, what is your process? Are you watching the video? Are you listening to the audio? Do you have the handbook? What is your process when you go through these programs? For me, I listen to the audio. Um, uh, that's what I listen to on my way into work um, and way home from work. It kind of helps balance me. And I'll do the work weeks. If I'm stuck on something, like if I know that I did not get what I needed out of module six, I'll go in and work my, you know, do the, do the actual print work of the how, the why, the who. Um, that always helped me out tremendously. And something Darren said on his Darren Daily today, um, which, if anybody hasn't listened to it, you should listen to it today. It was pretty incredible. Um, it was talked about your success and and you know where your strengths are and, and, and that you know Darren had to learn some things. He, he he keyed in on some great things that he was excellent at, and then the rest of it he had to train on it. And that is knowledge. That is reading the books. That is doing the work that it takes to get to where you want to be. Um, you're going to get from this program what you put into it. And um, I realized that last year because I started off pretty sloppy and I got really intentional towards the end of it. And it was, it was changing for me. I loved it. I mean, if we have the tools and the training available to us, I am no different than anybody else on this call. No different. The only thing that I might do that helps me a little bit more is that I have an insatiable sense of wanting to learn and wanting to be better. Yeah, and, and this you, program allows that for me. And you execute. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, if anybody has a question for Michelle or a comment, you know, do raise your hand. A uh, couple things. I, one, you know, when Todd was talking, you know, I went to our Facebook group and I just, you know, with with quotes around it, I typed in "move up" because he mentioned Danny's move up analysis. So I just want to shine a light on using the search feature to identify resources during calls, make sure everybody knows how to do that. Also, given how many of you guys are on, um, you know, you're just getting started, Todd, I do think it might be bare worth, you know, when you get a chance to talk again, talk about some of the processes in terms of how to, how to go through this program. I, you know, I will just share with everyone that I created, a, you know, when I got through this, you know, I, I went through Darren's program, but then I would always download all the documents. So I would download the slides, I would download the workbook, I'd download the video, I'd download the audio. I use Dropbox a lot, so I put it in Dropbox. That way I could access it from my mobile phone, I could access it from my desktop, 
So I've got it in a shared folder called Insane Productivity. I went in and I renamed everything um, so that you know anything that was module one, it started with a one. Anything that was module two, it started with a two. So that I could literally just go into that. And, and again, remember, I'm, I'm doing this program as a student and I'm also doing this program as a leader because I'm facilitating these calls. So I've got to have every resource just you know one click away from using it personally or using it as a teacher. You know, right now I'm in teacher mode. Uh, so anyways, that's my process. Uh, no different people have different processes, but given that 50% of you are going through this program and you're in the first few couple modules, I do want to make sure we, we cover that. Um, so, so Michelle, thank you on everything you shared. I did want to um, remind people because Michelle mentioned module six and that's, that's one where you really get into your why and I want to remind everybody that we've got a mortgage coach why worksheet. So remember this is Darren's program plus this is mortgage coach which means things that we've brought into the into it to help you guys and things that you know Michelle's brought, Danny's brought, Todd's brought, you know we've got a lot of top mortgage coach leaders that have created content and tools so do make sure that when you go through this everybody should go through the mortgage coach why worksheet uh, it's also available as a download in this document. I'm going to pull it up in a minute just because I want to make sure everybody is aware of it and everybody goes through it. But with, with that said, Michelle, anything else you want to add to what you just shared? I do want to add something that Todd had touched on and that was that I, I agree with one of the mentors that he was with this, this last week was my February tells me how my year is going to be. I mean, I don't let it limit me to that. But I'm, I'm geared up in February. I know, I mean, we are, we, my team right now, we are doing, I don't know, 15 to 20 prequels a week right now. And we're okay. gearing up for a low, you know, with, in an inventory situation where, at least in Southern California, we have a lack of inventory, maybe not as much as the Pacific Northwest because I got to hear some great stories this week about that. But um, we are gearing up and you have to make, your offer stand out and you have to make your value add to that realtor stand out so if you're not reaching out to listing agents when they're presenting offers please start doing so that's that's really key on letting them know number one your, your buyer is fully qualified and number two it lets them know that you're on top of things it might be it might help your, your client get in I'm not sure if it will but that's one of the tools that we use we we almost do it on every single deal. We just say, let us know when you're presenting the offer, send us the listing agent's information, and we call them immediately. I don't know if that will help anybody, but that's one of the, you know, number one of ten things that we do on any prequel. Love that. Great, great takeaway. Uh, so, by the way, I have on the screen right now the Mortgage Coach Values and Why Worksheet. You know, this is right out of Darren's playbook where, you know, identify your values. Uh, what are your values? You know, what is your mortgage? Why? You know, so you know, why are you a mortgage professional? And something Michelle works on all the time. She's super clear on it. What is your mortgage coach? Why? You know, why? Why do you subscribe to mortgage coach membership? Why are you committed to giving every family a total cost analysis? Again, we actually put Michelle's down as a inspiration for folks. We put some other top mortgage coach leaders down. We gave you some inspirational suggestions. But this is, I think, by the way, Todd, is, am I right? Is this module six? I think so, but don't hold me to it. Yeah, so we don't remember what module it is, uh, but just make sure when you do that, you do more than just Darren's program. You do Darren's program plus the mortgage coach. And really, we made the, the mortgage coach values and why, you know, we made it kind of, the, you know, completely aligned with Darren's program. So let's see if anybody has raised their hand. Nobody has raised their hand. It looks like we're going to have to start like uh, so just call. We've got to call some people. Uh, so I think let me throw in. You said to recap a little bit. I think one thing that's always a reminder. I see someone put a, a note in the questions that they feel really behind. So remember one thing is there's no spoilers in this program. If you're in module one through three and you hear Michelle talking about six, that's okay. It's just something you've got to look forward to and something that you're going to grow. Um, I think what you showed us, Dave, with how to actually download and save them is genius. You know, I did the same thing, but I did it on my Mac, and so I had to double 
do things later to get it moved to my iPhone to listen to it um, when I was when I was out of the house. So um, I think that is I think that is great. Um, you know, I have a running I did a running uh, note in Evernote. I took notes as I went along um, too, and I think there's an old picture somewhere of. Um, the wall in my old office. I moved offices. See, I used to be great on this call because I had every one of my giant post-it notes on the wall with every module and what it was about. And now it's in, now it's scanned in Evernote, so it's not quite as easy. When, I'm not as fast with those questions that you have in my in my bad memory. But you know, I think ultimately, you know, Darren talks about distractions in those first few modules and multitasking. And you know, I love that Michelle just said, you know, you got to get comfortable with politely saying no. Um, I probably borderline oftentimes on the unpolite, which I try not to be. But it's really you're just going to have to protect yourselves, set up that time to do a jam session where you know you're going to be doing the same productivity. And you know, the real key that Darren always says is rinse and repeat, right? You've got to do it more than once and get yourself set up for that. And so I would love to hear um, from some of the people who have been through this before who are going through a second time, knowing that half the people here are in the first few modules. I would love you to raise your hand and let the group know what is it on your second or third time through that you noticed in those first few modules that you missed before, or maybe what's still resonating really strongly with you now that um, now that you're in uh, you know in this again that you think would be helpful to the other folks. And if no one raises their hand, then I just give you permission, Dave, to start picking on people. Yeah, right. Right. I don't know exactly who's gone through a second time, so when I look at the names. I'm like, okay, who's on their second time? Uh, well, I know Bliss Sawyer is always a regular, so Bliss, I have a feeling you've gone through this and you're going through it a second time. Uh, how would so, you answer that question? So tell me the question again, because please don't hurt me. I was multitasking, Todd. Oh, <laughs> oh. you did. Okay. I know. Oh. I'm did a case study today. All right. So, hey, Todd, we need to come up with like a way. You know, you like a a pot, like like literally, you can. Uh, Wire money into a fund. Yes, I'm all over that. Like five dollars. Because it's the biggest thing I struggle with. Five bucks. Todd, it's yours. Okay. So, so if you could use Vimeo and send Todd five dollars, he'll he'll save it all. <laughs> we'll, 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 all pick a, we'll pick a we'll pick a charity as a group to donate all the money to. It's like those square jars, right? If you cuss around your house with your kids, exactly. you got to put money in the square jar. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we all so need a multitasking jar on their desk. When we multitask, we're all going to put money in a jar on our desk, and we're going to we're going to pick a, a group together that we're all going to support with the money to charity. I like that. Yeah. Let's play. Let's come up. Let's let's drill down on that offline. I like that. Let's figure out a way to you know turn our multitasking <laughs> right. into money. Go ahead. So Todd, I need you to repeat the question. Oh, I'm serious. All I said is if you're going through for your second time. Right, half the people are still in the first module. So if you're going through for a second time, what in those early modules resonated with you the second time, or did you find anything when you went back through that you missed? And you know, I don't want to, you know, I could, I could just throw out sure. the easy slap that says, "Well, if you missed the part on not multitasking," but, but I won't, I won't <laughs> go there, especially with all these people listening. So no, it's really just about being aware of myself, right? It's whether I don't care whether you're. You're working on weight loss or whatever it is you in your life you're working on. It's being aware of yourself, and so by going through it again and listening to it, it just makes me. Well, for example, I missed a couple of these calls because it's busy and all of that. But making time for these calls, even if I don't do them perfectly as far as listening, it's making me be aware. And re-listening to the modules again, it does the exact same thing. Um, and so it makes me kind of look at my notes again. I've got a real estate agent that loves Darren Hardy. And so we've set aside a couple times where we actually listen together and then discuss it. So that's kind of been a great thing for her and I to do and to say, all right, what did you get out of that? And this is what I struggle with. All right, I'm going to hold you accountable to that or you hold me accountable to this. And just bringing another person in, because um, this call is great, but... There isn't a lot of accountability to it unless, of course, you get called out. Then there's a lot of accountability. Um, but right, we need to have someone that says, what are you going to do? What, what are you working on right now? And so that's kind of what I'm doing this time is going just a little bit deeper of what am I going to actually do? Because the first time I went through it, I picked out some really good, amazing big rocks, I call them. And you know, my three vital functions, I hired an assistant, I've created some team metrics, and that's, I know, some in the later 
the later ones, but I did some really big things, and those things are in place now. It's just part of our business, and it's part of my workflow day, my morning and my evening routine. So now I'm going a little bit deeper, and I'm working on some of the smaller rocks and working to be just a little bit more effective with my time. So, for example, um, I have uh, set that I do 10 phone calls or ear texts a day outbound unsolicited to real estate agents or past prospects. And so that gets difficult to do if we get busy or if we just don't have a lot of energy. And so I have a way that I track that. And, okay, this is actually what I was doing. I was texting real estate agents. And I was saying, hey, just wanted to see how things are going for you. Let me know if there's anything I can do to help you or your clients. And so I have a top 50 list of realtors, and I actually just went and started at the bottom, and I'm working my way up, and I'm sending them all a text today. Um, and that's part of my workflow, but it's one of the easiest things to not do when we get busy or discouraged. I love it. I love it. So question for you on that, when you send to those 50 realtors, there are obviously people who know you and love you, what percentage will respond? Um, well, they're broken down to A, B, C, and D, and so some they all know me. They don't all send me business. They're kind of what I'm working on it all the time, and um, so I get a few responses. There's one I've been trying to get to lunch, and hey, do you have time next week? And you know, they'll say, yeah, thank you. Some of them I have prequals with, so I'll give them an update on that prequal. Hey, I'm still waiting for income docs or whatever. And so I think it's just I don't get a response from everyone. And that's where you have to have the confidence that, that even though you're reaching out and you don't hear back from people, don't give up on them. Keep doing it. Well, I love it because they see your name, right? I mean, I think that's the key as long as they've got you in their, in their phone. But I think that's a great action plan for people listening, wondering, all right, what am I going to do to get things rolling? Um, do you supplement that with phone calls then if you haven't heard from them? I do. I trade text? it up. So my goal is 10 phone calls or texts outbound unsolicited per day. And so I got a little bit behind today, or this week I mean, for my 50. And so today I'm just kind of slamming through. And since I wanted to be on the conference call, I um, decided to do some texting while I was doing that. But hey, you know what? This is actually a really good example of I didn't hear the question. You can't multitask and do both of them well. I need to go look back and see what I said to him on the text. I probably said bad words or something, right? Well, just, you know, that'd be okay. Only if you're doing voice attacks, right? That's when you have to worry. Yeah, yep, I know. So I appreciate you calling me out. I'm now recommitted. <laughs> well, you know, that's good. It was Dave who called you out, so he's the bad guy, not me. I want to be like. No, he's the good but, guy. Uh, he's no, the I guy. appreciate that. I, I appreciate your transparency because I think that helps the rest of the crew because you gave a perfect example of what we've learned in those in those first few models. Absolutely. Um, any any of you new folks on the call who hey, would either quick. have a question for Michelle or Bliss? Go ahead, Dave. Hey, yeah, before we bring on another person, so Bliss, I think you said a lot of things there that were, first of all, valuable for the 40% that are going through it again, the way you are taking this to partners, and then the way that you're actually using it as a, a way to enhance the relationship and the value that you bring to a, an agent that you have a common common passion for Darren Hardy with. So, I mean, I think that's awesome. Uh, and I think for anybody that's new, you're in your first, you know, th four sessions, it's something to aspire to. I mean, the way to, best way to learn content is where you learn it to where you've mastered it personally and you've learned it to the point that you can be a leader. And so I think, uh, I think it's valuable to both of those folks. And then I guess I would love to hear um, Michelle Town, just, you know, you're kind of in a similar position to where you're going through things the second time and you're, you're learning this at a level. Are you doing anything like that? You know, are you masterminding with anybody outside of this group? I would just love to hear you kind of add to what Bliss shared. Um, thanks, Dave. Um, Bliss, thanks for sharing. I, I agree 100% with Bliss. When I, my first time through, I, I grabbed a couple things, and I, that was all my brain could absorb and I could execute on. And now I'm going back and I'm going, oh, gosh, now let's fine-tune this a little bit more and be, I, I, the word my coach loves to use is intentional with what I do. So that is one of the great things. I also have a new partner this year that has not done any of this, so I'm, I'm able to mentor her a little bit and um, help her understand, you know, she's a, she's a phenomenal multitasker, at least that's what she thinks she is, and I told her I thought I was one too, and I realized that I feel at multitasking 
all, every day, and I just don't do it anymore. Um, I, have, I mean, I don't not do it. I have two hours a day that I'm allowed to multitask, and that's what I allow. The rest of the time is one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I just wish everybody would participate more. I, I have to tell you, I know that you're afraid to ask a question. Don't be afraid to ask the question because I promise you, the question that you ask is on somebody else's mind. I promise you. And, um, and there's no dumb questions in this world and nobody, we all look at it and we might giggle with you, but we're giggling alongside of you, not at you. So please ask questions. Uh, Michelle, that was awesome. And, and I mean, everything you do comes from the heart. And Michelle is so right. I mean, the more you participate in this venue, you know, like I, I think of the people that come to these calls. You've always been one, Michelle, that has uh, asked a lot of questions, delivered a lot of values. Danny has. Bliss, you have. And so, you know, the more you engage during these masterminds, uh, the better it is for everybody. And I also think, well, I think Todd and I as the facilitators, and now Michelle is a facilitator with us. We add value, but I always think the magic of these calls are just like that. Bliss was sharing how she's doing things, a couple great takeaways. Michelle played off of it. I mean, that's when these calls become some of the best educational experiences I've ever done. And I've done a lot of educational experiences. So um, thank you for that, Michelle. So hey, before we get one more person, I, I am showing my mobile phone now. And I, I wanted to make sure I did this just to really kind of hit this point home. Because when I hear of the, the insane productivity students that have got the most value from this program, it is the folks that have not just done one module and, you know, and that's it. They, they do them all and they do them again. And, and it is important that you get these in a multi-channel place. You know, you have them on your laptop. Again, right now you're looking at the back end of my mobile phone. So I am logged into um, Dropbox. And, and so I just wanted you guys to visually see that where I've taken the time. And by the way, this did not take me hours. Now, I do know how to use Dropbox. I'm a power user of that. We use it in a lot of ways. So it wasn't like I had to learn some new tech. But I mean, nowadays, everybody's got Google Docs. Everybody's got Dropbox. You know, um, and I, I hope everybody on the call has some way of online of file sharing. But, but I, I really urge folks you know, to not only log in and consume the content through Darren's platform, but download the content and have it in a place where you can access it anytime, anywhere. Uh, that is super important. And so, again, we're not tech support here. So anybody, you know, don't ask Todd and I to help set Dropbox up for you. Although I will say, you know, we've got a real loving community. So if you do need help, post what help you need, ask the question on our Facebook page, and I'll bet you um, we'll help you, whether it's the mortgage coach team and our support team coming in and helping you, or whether it's just another um, awesome mortgage coach leader. I, I, I just want to see everybody get this content in a place where you can access it and use it anytime, anywhere, and you're going through it over and over. So um, thank you, Michelle. That was awesome. Todd, any place you want to take it before we call on another person? Well, no, I just love what Michelle said, right? She's asking all of you to help sharpen her. And I think that there's a, such a hesitation um, to sit in the group. And, you know, I, there's definitely a time where I was a lurker myself. And there's even times now where I'd like to just see a, uh, you know, a flower against the wall. Um, but I think you just heard it from someone who's a super producer that she wants to hear from all of you because it'll sharpen her. And so I think that that is, you know, that's one of the keys. It, it's funny. I've been... I'm coaching my own team that 2017 year is a year about courage. Um, and I've told them that they need to be courageous. Um, again, that's kind of the mindset piece because um, oftentimes when they're worried about a deal, they don't tell a borrower. They're not harsh enough with a borrower. I don't know that harsh is the right word about exactly what they need. And I said, let's be upfront with them about what it's going to take to get the transaction done. You know, again, same thing with your realtor partners, right? You know, don't be afraid to go after new realtor partners, but also don't be afraid to um, let the other ones know when, you know what you need their help with and, and where they are. And so I think it, it also applies to all of you. Uh, be courageous with insane productivity and blocking the time to do it to be successful, but be courageous on this call. Um, and so I'm hoping that hey. Michelle's pleading and, and my encouragement that somebody like, wow, we got two hands up, Dave. Why don't yeah, you pick hey, one? Let's go. Hey, yeah, exactly. So I'm going to go in order. So Jason, get ready to be on mic. Also, I did post Todd's quote, 2017 is a year about courage, because 
Dude, that is just completely badass. I love that. So uh, it is the year to be courage, courageous. And even if you are courageous now, take it to another level. Jason, you raised your hand. Did you have a question or a comment, my friend? All right. So Jason, um, you have been unmuted, at least on our side. Uh, would love to hear your question. We'll give you like another second. And then if not, um, figure out the tech on your side. Jason? Maybe. Oh, maybe this is under the wrong name. This is Amanda. Uh, okay, but, Amanda. Yeah, but you, I didn't you, come across my screen and say, unmuted. You are unmuted. Sorry about calling you the wrong name, but that's how it's showing up on my side. Okay, that's okay. Um, so I am with Hallmark, and we a bunch of us have just started this recently. And we had a call this morning where a lot of us were talking about Module 3 is where we are and training people to communicate with us the way that we want to do business now. So uh, there's a lot of hesitation in changing from being that person who has always been really quick and responsive to, um, you know, to switching that out and possibly having the automated email go or your special voicemail on your phone. And at least for me, you know, I get sweaty palms thinking about that. <laughs> and and how to retrain my realtors and everybody who really love the fact that I get back with them ASAP. That first of all, that is awesome. And you have Michelle Spain here. You probably couldn't have a better top producer to help you with that because I know Michelle's story, and Michelle, would you mind fielding that question? And you know, we've got about eight minutes left. Uh, JC, I know you raised your hand, but that is such a big question for I think everybody in the mortgage space. That Michelle, if it takes up the whole eight minutes, great. If you can knock it out in five minutes, that's cool too. How would you respond? All right, I just heat up Michelle. Michelle. Let me see if I can unmute Michelle. Michelle Town, are you here? So it looks like Michelle, uh, we have a tech issue. Uh, Todd, would you mind fielding that? Yeah, I could run with that. You know, I think it's, um, I, and I love that. So thanks, thanks for jumping, Amanda, with that, with that comment. Uh, to me, it's a conversation um, with your partners about your 2017, uh, about insane productivity. And, you know, for me, it was always a really genuine, transparent conversation of just saying, you know what, um, I've, I'm going through this program with Darren Hardy, and if they don't know who Darren is, then I explain it to them, and I, and I talk to them about that. And they say, you know what, I, I'm changing um, the way I want to do business this year, and, and I don't want you to think that it's, I'm not going to be that person who you can always count on when you can count on them, but I'm going to try to be a little more intentional about my time, and so I'm asking a favor of you. Um, I'm asking you to help me with that accountability piece. So just like um, we heard uh, Bliss saying she's going through with us with a, with a realtor, maybe with Michelle, um, I would ask them to be part of it. Hey, I want you to help me with this, and I want you to know that it's super important to me. I'm always going to be getting back to you, and I'm always going to do it. Um, you know, I may, it just may be that when you call me, I'm not answering your phone just because I'm, I'm doing a jam session and I'm actually focusing on our business. And so when I'm doing these other things, I'm actually doing it to help you not to hurt you, um, and then, you know, just train them how and when you'll be responding. So uh, what I just taught them was instead of just, you know, being passive aggressive and ignoring their calls and texts and then calling them back when I was done with, with that on time, um, you know, I, I warned them about it, and then I also let them know what I was doing during that time. You know what, I'm going to be working this week on, um, you know, my follow-up um, email campaign to our borrowers to make sure that our borrowers are getting um, you know, more frequent updates for me and that we're cementing to you and I much better. And so I also help them understand how me improving myself by me not being instantly available to them was actually going to be a long-term benefit. Does that make sense? That does. Hey, and by the way, Michelle is on the call. So, uh, Michelle, do you mind taking a swing at that now? I know you had a tech issue. Yeah, sorry. I, apparently, living in a rural country, when you walk, or I live a little bit rural, when you walk around the house, um, you drop your cell, your cell signal. Um, but um, so sorry about that. I also, um, it was one of the hardest things for me to do, so that is such a great question. Um, I was in fear of my realtors and my clients going somewhere else because I wasn't readily available. And um, I, with Darren's help and with my coach's help, I just kind of pushed through that fear a little bit. You'd be surprised how many of your realtor partners 
are going to be okay with you telling them, hey, I, I might not be able to answer your call right away, but let me tell you why. It's because I want to give you 100% of my undivided attention. So last year, one of the number one comments that I wanted to eliminate from my clients and my realtor's voice was, you sound busy. I hate that because that means I'm not paying attention. So um, just so you know, I, I instituted that back in oh, August of last year. I have not had, and I, I can say this with, with pride right now, and I don't know if pride's the right word, but I have not had that happen since August. Nobody tells me I sound too busy. They always say, I'm sorry to bother you, and I always tell people, you're not bothering me, but it is, it is freeing, and if your agents know, and do what Todd says, to say, the reason why we're doing this, give them some background of why you're doing it, and then check with them in a month and say, have you seen any difference? And you'll, you'll be surprised. And I think you'll I just walk through that fear, I promise you. It will, it will benefit you. Hey, Michelle, would you give us like one to two minutes of scripting on that, just, you know, uh, you're talking to an agent, you're trying to deliver that message, you know, give us, give us a little more scripting if you don't mind. Sure, I would, um, I'll just say Anna, I'll, I'll tell Anna, hey Anna, um, um, I just want to let you know I might not be as responsive on my emails and phone calls as because what I'm doing is I'm trying to focus more on delivering more um, content, uh, I, I guess, I don't know if that's the word I use, but now you put me on the spot so now I'm, now I'm going to fumble. Um, it's okay. I know, sorry, um, but I, I mean, I'm, I'm very honest with them. I just say I, I need to, I need to do something different. I'm working too many hours, and I'm not getting enough quality time with you and my and the clients. And if you wouldn't mind letting me try this for a little bit, if it doesn't work, we can try something else. But communication is key to us, and so let me know how I do. And I, I kind of put the back on them so that they can report back to me, um, because I want them to feel a part of what I'm doing. And I'll ask them. How do you like it? Is it working better for you? Is there something I can change? I think I do these with, I mean, I do it with all my realtors, but my key realtors know exactly what I do. The newer realtors, I don't have to explain it to them because I, I've already, I can't remember who said this last year, I am on demand, I'm, I'm in demand instead of on demand. And it was very hard for me to grasp that concept. Yeah, well, you, you, you've, I can't remember what call it was, but we, I mean, we spent like 15, 20 minutes on this. And I, I do think it might be worth bringing back because, I mean, it's something that everybody struggles with. By the way, Michelle, just because we do have a whole new group coming through the call right now, uh, let everybody know just, you know, what your production has grown from. You know, maybe what was it three years ago and what is it today? Just so you kind of get a feel for your, your platform. Okay, so three years ago I was doing about 30 to 40 million. Um, and last year um, personal production did 105. Group production, we did um, 182 um, so, with over um, 350 units closed. Awesome. So congrats on the growth. And it, like I said, that's a common topic. We will talk about that again next week because I just think it's such a, in terms of being insanely productive, it's, it's just huge. And I think everybody shares that challenge. So, by the way, did we, did we answer that question well enough? Do you have a kind of a question after the question on that? Well, not necessarily. I really appreciate the, I mean, I guess that's where my gut kind of wanted to go, and it's kind of what we talked about this morning, too, was uh, having the conversation with the agents, and I've already had it with one agent, and he was so receptive, like, like I'd like to really know more about this training that you're going through. I'm like, of course, you know, what day next week you're in the office, let's connect again. But, um the idea of the whole big picture of actually implementing it for my entire business is, is scary. So I'm thankful to hear what Michelle was saying that, yeah, I had a lot of fear about that. And you know what? I fought through it and it was worth it. So that's great feedback. And I also love the idea of going back to them and saying, hey, have you noticed a difference? And just getting some affirmation of, of the change that you've made. So yeah, that was very helpful. Thanks. Good. Well, hey, let's do this. Um, one, if you wouldn't mind coming back next week, hopefully you've had that conversation with another agent or so. And then, Michelle, I don't know if you can be on next week's call, but if you could be, it'd be great. And I, I would love to just dedicate, 50, you know, call it the first 15 minutes next week of how we're creating boundaries with people because such a, such a part of being insanely productive, it's creating new boundaries for yourself. And it's creating new boundaries for other people. I, mean, I can't remember the exact quote, but uh, what was, what was uh, maybe it's on the reminders where it's like, 
expect what you tolerate. What's what's that quote, Todd? Let's close it with that. You know, the yeah, it's exactly what it is, right? Right. It's it's you 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 tol you allow you get what you allow, right? So whatever you tolerate is what you're going to receive. Yeah. So let's Todd, if you wouldn't mind, kind of owning that, and let's let's start next week with a whole topic around boundaries, tolerate. Michelle, do you think you, do you know if you have a conflict for next week? I am totally. I'm. I'm. I'm until September. I'm all yours. All right. Well, I. I. I even think this is so important because if, if you're in your first four modules, first of all, you're consuming an hour of content, you know, to go through Darren's content. Then you've got an hour of you know just implementation study. I mean, so it's two hours a week, and 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 so it's like you can't even get through this program if you can't create the boundaries to do it. So, Todd, do you mind if we make that a big topic next week? No, I think that's I think that's great, and I applaud uh, Amanda for raising her hand and getting in on that. And I think that that's exactly that's exactly what this group needs, right? We need you guys to come in with great questions like that because I just love that that uh, that whole direction that we went. Wish we would have had more time. So I think it'll be great um, for next week. And I do want to point out one thing. I know we're over time by a minute. That um, Amanda said that I thought was great is that when you when you tell your realtors that you're going through insane productivity, it's going to open up an opportunity to get together because they're going to want to hear what you're doing, right? They're all just like you. They have that thirst for knowledge that, that Michelle talked about earlier. And so um, oftentimes it's going to lead to people wanting to hear what you're doing, and then you can help educate them, you can help hold them accountable, and you're going to take your relationship with them to a whole different level. So it's a great opportunity. So as we wrap up today's call, if you could just let us know, you know, how do we do? Do we just you know, get tons of value, a few takeaways? Solid, you know, or you know, was it just okay? And by the way, be candid with us. Todd and I are committed to delivering value, you know, and hopefully getting lots of takeaways. But when you don't get a lot, we want to know about it. So if you could answer this poll question on the way out, uh, Amanda, look forward to hopefully meeting you next week. I'm going to be speaking at your sales rally, so uh, be sure to come up and say hi. And uh, let's get more of the Hallmark people not only in this call but participating. It would be great to have you guys. Uh, really be active in this community. And uh, everybody have an awesome weekend, and hopefully you'll uh, come next week prepared. We'll have a little more engagement. And Michelle Town, as always, thank you for everything you bring to the table. Thank you, guys. All right, take care. Thank you, too, Todd. All right, my pleasure. Everyone have a great week. All right, thanks, all.